In terms of the mood music going into these talks, what, what is it? So I think um, towards the end of last week and after those local elections, the message that both parties came out with was, you know, we've both been punished at the polls and, you know, we, we've got to deliver Brexit. And so I think there was, a, there was quite a lot of optimism, if you like, that some kind of deal, that at least they would make an effort to make some kind of deal. Whether that optimism has been sort of sustained through the weekend is not that clear. Um, I think the mood music perhaps has become a little less optimistic over the course of today, if you like. So what happens next? If we don't get uh, a deal, then basically the government is going to have to put to Parliament alternative uh, Brexit scenarios and see if they can find some kind of consensus in Parliament. Remember, though, that Parliament has done this before and failed. Um, and so, I mean, one of the things to watch will be how the government structures these votes to make sure they do force a majority and don't let Parliament once again just say no to everything. Well, the Foreign Secretary says that uh, customs union might be the thing that will break the deadlock, but he's sort of hinting at a temporary customs union. Is that even possible, Emma? Well, it is possible because it's already in the Brexit deal, the Brexit deal that Parliament rejected and that a big chunk of the Tory party rejected. So there is a, a slight sense with all this that they are reinventing stuff that was that has long been rejected. In fact, you know, I think we had last week, Theresa May was once again, you might remember, Checkers, the, the checkers deal, which was a you know a, 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 a fudge, basically a way of you know pleasing all sides, and that was rejected by the EU. So, with this idea of a temporary customs union, it's very much like the backstop. That's what the backstop is. And so, we are, there, there is certainly some recycling of ideas here, and it's not clear um, that that it's going to wash. Remember that Labour doesn't necessarily. I mean, the, the election result last week for Labour was very bad, um, and it's not clear how they're going to fare in the European elections. But the. The t real time pressure is on, the, is on the Tory side and Labour, really, they don't have a big incentive to agree to something um, unless they really are going to get everything they've been asking for. And one of the things that they've been asking for is a confirmatory referendum and, and that could well be, along with the customs union, as you mentioned, perhaps there is room for, for compromise there. But then the other sticking point is this confirmatory uh, referendum, also known as the second referendum, which is perhaps a trickier point. Um, but, but increasingly Labour MPs seem to be insisting on that. Like, how problematic is that, is, is that for the Labour leadership? They've kind of dodged that story a little bit, but, but the momentum, certainly in the kind of the articles that I'm reading, seems to be suggesting that Labour MPs are becoming more and more exercised by that issue. Yeah, I think that's right. There's, the Labour Party is... We, t we talk a lot about how the Conservative Party is split about Brexit, but the Labour Party is also split about Brexit. And, you know, Corbyn is probably less keen on a second referendum than other uh, sort of leading figures in his, in his party. And I think, you know, that is probably going to be one of the sticking points in the next few days.